Welcome back to beautiful, sunny Miami, Florida, guys. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking Rolex. So for some of you guys who have seen my previous videos, you guys may be asking yourself, does this guy hate Rolex? Because in some of my videos, I kinda express part of my experience dealing with Rolex, especially the Rolex AD. So in today's video, guys, I'm gonna let you guys know my overall experience with Rolex and the Rolex AD. And this video is gonna be good, especially for my new supporters. I know a lot of you guys are new and I appreciate it, guys. I appreciate you guys for joining and subscribing. So in today's video, I'm gonna let you guys know my experience with Rolex. So do I hate Rolex? And the answer is no, I don't hate Rolex. <laughs> what I do hate the most is the ADs. So for some of you guys who may not know, there's Rolex, the company, the brand, and there's the Rolex authorized dealers, the Rolex ADs. And it's the ADs that you and I have to go face to face with to try and get a Rolex watch. I love the product. That's one of the things, guys, that I love is Rolex watches. I love the product, but I hate the Rolex ADs. I can't really say that I hate Rolex, the company in Switzerland, but I can say that I hate that they accept or they allow the authorized dealers to treat the customers the way they do. I believe and I think that they have the power to set certain policies in place to make them a little bit more friendly, a little bit more welcoming to new customers, especially. So here's how it started from the beginning. Guys, I was poor, broke. I'm broke, nigga, I'm broke. Trying to figure out how I could get into the watch world, how I could get a Rolex timepiece. I wasn't working, I was probably in college back then, but I saw Rolexes on you know people's wrists and I was like, I want a Rolex timepiece. It came to points where I was walking through the malls everywhere. That was probably when I was in New York too, here in Miami, walking through the malls and I'll see the Rolex ADs and I'll be ashamed to go into the store. Maybe not ashamed, but I was broke. I couldn't buy a Rolex watch. And for some reason, I'm that type of person. If I can't afford it, why go in and entertain? But I know that's not the right mindset. If you guys are the same, comment down below and let me know. If at some point you were, you know, embarrassed to go into a Rolex store. It could be Rolex, AP, it doesn't even have to be watches. It could be going into Ferrari, Lamborghini, exotic cars. And just because you can't afford it, you felt uncomfortable going in. But anyways, that was a phase that I was in. I got out of it once I graduated and started getting a few coins, saving up, investing. So at a point I was ready to pull the trigger on a Rolex watch if they allowed me to buy it. So around the time where I could actually buy a Rolex watch from the AD, I was here in Miami permanently. And there were three locations that I really wanted to, you know, check out some of the timepieces and hopefully be able to purchase a watch. There's one in Naples, Florida. The other one is in Dayland Mall. And the third one is in the design district downtown here in Miami, Florida. Now, the worst experience that I had was at the location in the design district. Guys, they were absolutely rude. Well, boo fucking who? Just the entire energy. I think I made a video of that experience, a story time of that experience. Walking into that AD was just an energy that wasn't welcoming. And just walking in, I just wanted to walk out. I kind of gave the person an attitude after they gave me an attitude. And just with that, I knew, okay, it's not gonna happen. Don't waste my time. As soon as I walked in, you couldn't really even see any timepieces displayed in the case. So it was just like, it was just weird. On the, the door, it said by appointment only. So just with that, I was like, man, they don't, they don't want anybody to come in there. They don't want new customers at all. So that was my experience with the design district Rolex AD, and that was my only time going. Maybe I should go again and see if anything changed. Now, the second experience is in Naples, Florida. Now, Naples, Florida is a beautiful place, a lot of retirees, so they definitely have their clientele that they, you know, if they want to sell a timepiece to. So I went in, and the experience was better than 
the design district experience. I went in, and at that time, I was surprised to see pre-owned Rolexes uh, available to purchase. So I took the time to look at some of the pre-owned watches, tried them on. I didn't want any, but that experience was mediocre. I was able to have a good conversation with the salesperson, but that was about it. Didn't put my name on the list, and of course, I didn't put my name on the list in the design district. Now for the last experience, and the AD that actually gave me a call five years later to come pick up a Rolex Mariner, that experience was okay. I walked in, was welcomed, you know, take a look at some of the pieces. I looked at some of the tutors, I looked at some of the Rolexes, Omega, some of the other watches. And I told the salesperson, hey, I really want a Submariner or a GMT. He was like, okay. So I put my name down on the list and he said, hey, there's a good chance that you're not gonna get a call, but you never know. So put your name down and we'll see. I totally forgot about this entire process. I, I totally forgot that I even put my name down at this Dateland AD. But while I was in Greenwich, Connecticut, this is five years later, I received the call, not even knowing. I thought it was a prank call. I got the call from the same salesperson saying, hey, you got a Submariner date, come get it, it's yours. I'm like, Jesus Christ, now you, you call me? I'm so sick of these people, you know? Ooh. When I'm not excited anymore, my enthusiasm is down, uh, circumstances different. My schedule wouldn't allow me to fly down just to pick up a Rolex watch. And I told him, hey, is it possible that you can ship it? And he said, no. I think he said, because it's my first purchase, uh, I'll, I'm, I'll have to come in and get it. So I ended that call with that salesperson saying, hey, give me a day to think about it and I'll let you know if I could fly down to pick up the watch. But during that time, while I was thinking about it, I don't know if it's my pride and my ego. I got a big ego. That was just in the way and i was like clyde five years waiting for a rolex submariner just doesn't make sense so after some contemplating and trying to decide i told myself no so i called the salesperson back and i said hey my schedule doesn't permit me to come down there to pick up that watch so i can't do it i'm an adult but i can handle this <laughs> i'm okay he just said, okay, and moved on. I'm sure he called someone else to get that timepiece. The crazy thing is that he gave me this call five years later. I didn't appreciate it then, and I don't, I don't appreciate it now. And it's five years later after my excitement faded, and five years after the entire, not hype of, you know, the opportunity of purchasing a watch from an AD, but it was just an exciting time to really get a Rolex from your AD and start to build that relationship. And I just went through those years of just like developing a, a grudge when it comes to the Rolex ADs that when I got the call, I was like, hey, forget about it. I don't really want it anymore. I could put that money elsewhere into something that's going to actually make me money. Now, if you pick up a timepiece from the Rolex AD, you just can't even sell it if you want to on the secondary market. Not that I promote that type of thing, but it's still something that's in the back of everyone's mind. So from this brief explanation of my experience with Rolex, I think you guys can understand why I have like a love-hate relationship with Rolex. With the actual Rolex watch, no guys, I love the timepiece, especially their vintage watches. The modern ones, I could care less about. If I get one, great, but it's the vintage ones that I really do love. So I love the watches, but I hate the process that the Rolex AD specifically put the customers through. I hate the process, I hate the customer service, and I hate that Rolex above the Rolex AD. Rolex allow their ADs to treat their customers the way they do. I think Rolex definitely have the power to dictate and set policies in place to be more welcoming, to be more inviting, especially to new customers. If you guys agree with me, comment down below share your experiences that you've had with your local ADs or any other ADs, whether you travel to another country, let me know. Comment down below your experience. Guys, thanks for watching. Remember to give the video a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and stay tuned for the next video.